hi everyone, thank you for coming. I'm Thibault, I'm a web developer at Torchbox since two weeks ago. But before that, I was actually part of the Wagtail core team for about two years. And I worked on this new Reflex editor that Wagtail has since a year ago called Drafttail. Um, so today I'm just going to show, be showing you some demos of things you can do with Drafttail and things we are hoping to do with Drafttail directly inside Wagtail. Um, so improving upon the authoring experience uh, within Wagtail directly with this Reflex editor. <coughs> And before I actually get to the demos, I want to sh give you a bit of context, because again, I just started Torchbox two years ago. I was actually, uh, two weeks ago, sorry. I actually started this work on draft sale um, three years ago at this company called Springload in New Zealand. And the main reasons why we wanted to make this happen was that we were very frustrated with the existing editor of Wagtail back then. So you don't have to read all of this, by the way. This is just my notes. <laughs> I'll just say them out loud, but better. Um, so our main frustrations were just the editing UI being quite poor and unpredictable within the editor and um, people not being able to rely on the fact that the manipulations they would do in the field, so for example, um, setting a heading level, setting a list item, not being able to rely on the fact that these would always give the same results, which is quite annoying when you want to type your content and can't rely on what will actually be output on the page. Um, and quite a common frustration as well was the fact that if you copied your content from Word and placed it into the field, you'd have all of this garbage of styles from Word that you don't really know what to do with if you're just uh, just an editor. Um, so we decided to build this new editor to address those concerns and also to allow people to actually develop extensions to the editor much more easily if they want to make custom formatting um, for, for their end users, for their websites. Um, so yeah, that was in 2016 at Springload, and um, we shipped Whitetail about a year ago before Whitetail, um, Drafttail, sorry, about a year ago before Whitetail Space. And since then, I actually haven't been involved with Whitetail day to day in my job. So I've actually been um, supported by people through Patreon to make the stuff that I'm going to show you today. So just wanna say thanks to those people who've been supporting me over the last year, because without them, I would just wouldn't be there, basically. <laughs> um, so last year I was here as well, and I actually wore the same shirt. Don't know what it says about me, but yeah, I thought I should mention that. Um, and I was talking about draft ale as well. So yeah, kind of, I had the same water bottle and same computer and yeah. Um, and I was talking mostly about why we did it and how it worked behind the hood. And I was really, really also keen to talk about how it could improve the experience of uh, users of the CMS. And I was saying during my talk, oh, I'm going to write this blog post about like UI and UX and how this makes it better. And this never happened. <laughs> so today's talk is kind of this blog post, which is ways in which we can improve the experience of content authors within Wagtail with this new editor. And again, before I dive into the demos, I wanna talk about why this matters, at, le at least to me. So the, the, the basic premise for me is that what matters the most about our websites is the content that's on them. Because if you build a site that has a great design, great features, but the content is terrible, then the um, experience for the end users of your website will also be terrible. The whole point of having a CMS is that you can structure the content in a way that's useful for the people who actually depend on the content day to day. So for example, the NHS is quite important for them that their uh, website is understandable for whoever needs to look up uh, medicine or look up um, practitioners, um, doctors, yeah. So, so to me, the, the basic premise is just that content goes first. And um, if you start thinking of it this way, then it means that the authoring UI within the CMS for content actually is pretty important because if people can't structure their content, if people can't input whatever they want to publish, then the site just suffers regardless of how good it is otherwise. And yeah, if, if the UI uh, of the CMS is lacking, what en ends up happening is that people will still write content, except they'll do it outside of the CMS, say in Word or Dropbox Paper, Google Docs, whatever, and then have to have this extra step of copying that content and entering it into the CMS, which I think is a valid use case, but can be quite painful because of course, between what us as developers set up in the CMS and what Word has available is that quite different features. Um, so to me, it matters quite a lot to try and bring those people who are us using Wagtail but authoring contents outside of the CMS to bring those people in the CMS <coughs> and also supporting those copy-paste workflows. 
And finally, the, the last reason why I think this matters a lot is that other tools within the um, content authoring ecosystem are innovating a lot. So I assume you're all quite familiar with Word and Google Docs, but these days tools like Dropbox Paper, for example, are actually quite compelling alternatives to these ones. And the main reason why um, so many people find them compelling is that the um, authoring experience when you enter content into a document actually feels much nicer than those traditional word processors. And yeah, other examples of um, similar patterns are Slack as well, which has quite, quite a lot changed how we communicate and how we enter our messages. And um, of course, um, kind of an obvious one as well is WordPress's new Gutenberg editor, which changes a lot as well how WordPress users enter their content. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of context. Now for the fun part. Um, a bit more context. <laughs> so those demos, I'll be showing them to you outside of Wagtail but they should still work the exact same way within Wagtail, except that my PR hasn't been merged yet, yet or released, but as soon as my PR is merged and released, you'll be able to do the same things I'm showing you right now in the CMS. And the other thing about those demos is that they are really just proof of concepts that I built to try out those APIs and see whether it was possible to build those things. They aren't actually polished designs that we're going to release into Wagtail right away. So this is just basically ideas, things we could be doing then what we end up actually integrating into Wagtail, that's another story. So, this is Drafttail, a very simple version of it. Uh, one of the main features of Drafttail is that it should be very easy to configure what's available, so this is the most simple demo that has nothing available really to it, it's just uh, two block level things and two inline things. Now let's go to the future. <coughs> and I'll start with uh, one of my favorite examples because it's very simple and just a net win, and this is something I stole from WordPress. I'm very glad to say they do really good, nice things around editing. So, you want to enter a link into your content, you get your URL, you copy it, select some text, paste it, and now you have it, you have the link on your content. And, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I totally stole this from someone else's code, but yeah. <laughs> And like, this is super simple, but quite saves you quite a lot of time. You don't have to learn those keyboard shortcuts. You don't have to mess with the link picker within Wagtail, which can be quite slow to load. You can just take your link, you know where to put it, and enter it, and that's it. And of, of course, within Wagtail, we ha also have to consider how this works for internal links to the site, so it will be more complicated. But from the end user's perspective, the experience is much more straightforward. And of course, if you just paste the URL directly inside the text, it just makes it a link as well, because why wouldn't you want that? Um, <coughs> so yeah, really simple, but I like to start with this one because it's just so easy to get and saves so much time. Uh, another one, which I talked about last year as well, was um, how keen I was to see this editor being used outside of the traditional pattern of rich text, bold, italic, headers, and so on, because I think this editor, with all of the APIs it brings, can also be used even if you just want to type plain text. So. This field right here is really straightforward. The only thing it does is to constrain the user input to one line. And no matter how much I press enter, it will never go to two lines, which actually can be quite useful if you want to do some rich text, but on a heading element, and you don't want to allow the user to enter more paragraphs or more list items or whatever. And um, yeah, one of the um, um, other reasons why I, I was very keen to do this back at Spring Road was that we were really wanting to give our, our content authors control over for example, how their, their heading levels broke when the page got resized. And so here, for example, even though this is a single line, you can still enter line breaks within it, and it will still preserve it as a single line just with a line break. So this kind of the ty nice type of like very refined uh, interaction that you can build with this editor. And yeah, something that's much easier for each and every one, to everyone of us to understand is markdown shortcuts. So. If you have experience with Markdown, you might not actually want to learn how to use a new editor. And here you can just type uh, Markdown style prefixes for blocks, like list items as well. This is a very common pattern. And it just works. And you don't, again, you don't have to learn the shortcuts. You can just use what you know already. And if you don't know Markdown, well, you can just reach at the toolbar at the top and still use it. So I really find it quite cool. And again, this, wa this was already there a year ago. So nothing too new here. But I did a few more, so for example, now you can also do um, italic and bold. So again, like this is just markdown syntax, and then it makes it italic. 
And again, like just saves you so much time that you don't have to learn all those shortcuts and use them. And same for strike through, which might be less common for people to know the shortcut of, and code and so on. Um, yeah, uh, horizontal rules as well, just like three hyphens and that's it. Um, yeah, so I'm just like a big time saver. And a nice experience for end users who know Markdown already. Um, emojis. I love emojis. I don't know how you feel about emojis. I feel like uh, our modern websites that are built with white they don't have enough emojis. So I was <laughs> really keen to find a way to make that happen. And this is, this is really just an emoji picker. But um, yeah, this is just an example of the type of thing you can build with this. And um, this is actually a ready-made package, which is why it kind of looks out of place in this editor. So Draft.js, which is what Draft.l uses, has this ecosystem of ready-made packages. And this is just one of them that now you can just reuse right away and have fun with. Um, action lists. So one more example of the type of thing you can build, build um, with this. So list item, and then kind of the same as uh, GitHub's. Um, markdown syntax, and this makes an action list that has checkboxes. And you might, uh, it would be very fair for you not to have any use for this in your website, but this is the type of thing that again you can build with this if you want to. And the none of this functionality I'm showing you here with action lists is um, reliant on the internals of draft. This is something you can do as, as a user of the editor, as a developer implementing the editor, you can implement this uh, with, with its APIs. Uh, one more example, which comes from uh, from Slack. So in Slack, you enter those those comments that starts with slash and then whatever the command is. So I just made a couple uh, slash hr makes an hr and slash embed and the URL of the embed and you wait a bit. And I didn't implement the loading state, but yeah, <laughs> and it uh, inserts an embed. Um, which again, like you don't want people to have to mess with the um, embed picker if they don't have to. If they can just know to type embed and paste their URL that they have already copied anyway, it's just so much faster for everyone. And one of the one of the key points I want to get to with this is that when you think of embeds, it starts to overlap with stream field within Wagtail. And here, this is creating an embed within rich text. But it would actually be nothing preventing it from uh, inserting an embed in stream field and simply splitting the editor in two and inserting the embed in between where um, when you make that happen. Um, so yeah, kind of on the same theme as blurring the lines with stream field, this editor doesn't have the traditional toolbars. It instead has uh, inline toolbars that are um, common with medium, for example, has these and lots of other tools, of course. And um, also the si sidebar here that has the um, block level things. Um, so you, I'm sure you're familiar with these already, but just to show you that it's actually something you can build as well with the editor that Wagtail has at the moment. And um, what I really like about this uh, as well that I should mention is that it makes the editor um, have much less of a presence on the page. Your content is much more visible if the UI doesn't take up the whole space. So for example, if I go back to the previous one, the toolbar is quite noticeable. If you have tens of those fields on the page, it uh, ends up being very just distracting this, this kind of contrast. Whereas here, until you actually start to interact with the content, the UI just isn't even there, which is quite quite interesting. Um, yeah, and that's really about it for, for my demos. Um, so I'll give you some food for thought and um, give you some insight into, wha into what's next for those things. So again, those are just proof of concepts to demonstrate the APIs and I guess the value of those interactions. But then we will still have to polish some of these before we integrated them into Wagtail. <coughs> and um, for things that we don't integrate into Wagtail, uh, we also have to do documentation and tutorials for you all to be able to build use those APIs with your own projects. And I uh, just want to mention quickly how you can help with this if you're interested in it. Uh, to, to me, what I would value the most is to actually hear from the people who use those UIs, so your content editors on your sites. If you can all, or you might have already done it, if you can do some user research with them and ask them what are their pain points, how they could make their editing UI better, and then pass on the feedback to us, the core team, this is super valuable. And yeah, just have them try out those features and see what they say and whether they actually want to use Markdown shortcuts or not at all. 
Um, and for you developers, try to use the APIs as well and give us feedback on how you see them working for you. And uh, potentially get involved with the future rich text task, task force. We've been, we've been talking in the core team on how to get more of the community, the developer community involved with the development of Wagtail. So if you're interested, we could have a core team slash rich, te rich text group that is focused on delivering those, those experiences within Wagtail. Um, and that's it for me. Thank you.